Welcome to Upon Walton Farm. And today we're gonna do a great French country classic dish. I'm sure many of you have had it. Many of you probably have made it. It is Cocavin, chicken in red wine. And it's a wonderful succulent stew. I am going to be using Louis Diat's recipe from that wonderful old cookbook I got for $3 at a used bookstore from 1961. And uh, I know I've been talking a lot about him. He was the chef to the Waldorf Astoria, um, really probably from the 20s to about 1961. And he served them for many years. His recipe, he has a wonderful story in the book about his grandmère and a wedding um, occasion where this was made um, for the family. And I'm gonna be reading that to you. Julia Child's recipe is absolutely precise. If you follow her recipe, it will be magnificent. But she is taking a country dish and she's really using elements of whole cuisine. She cooks things separately, she strains the sauce. It, I have made hers and it is perfection. His is a little simpler and the flavor is almost identical. I really will say it, it is phenomenal. And his, you only have to dirty one pot. That's it. It is a one pot meal and there is only one thing to clean at the end. Everything is done in one um, pot that you're gonna basically braise in. So what I'd like to show you first, which he doesn't, he just says a whole chicken cut up into pieces. And he doesn't say to do what I'm gonna do. This is from Julia Child. I am gonna um, clean up the chicken a bit so that it browns evenly. You don't have to do this. Um, you will still have a wonderful dish and a delicious flavor. This is just so that it browns evenly and that it is easier to eat, that you don't have tons of bones on the plate and you know, you're cutting through a lot of different things. This makes it very neater and it makes a really, really lovely presentation. So here is the chicken breast. This is the one thing you're probably gonna have to do the most of if you want to do this. The thighs, I did remove some of the bone and cartilage and kept the main bone. But this, when you get a whole chicken cut up, it's literally that, it's just a chicken cut up. And if I would like to show you, you have this horrible piece of cartilage. It's unedible. You can cook with it on, you have the rib bones, but it's very messy on a plate. And especially if you're having guests, I think this step, and I do agree with Julia Child, is I think it's worth it. And what I've done already, you need a very sharp knife and you always want to cut away from you, okay? Now, I've already pre-done it. If you could see, I've opened it up and I've cracked the joint here, okay, to make it easier. So what I've done is I've sliced around the cartilage, trying to not lose much meat. And you really, as you slice, you can scrape and that will make sure you don't waste. And then at the end, when we get to the end of it, all I do is I simply cut this off. It's that simple, okay? If you're gonna make a stock, which I wanna show you the stock that I'm gonna use in a second, um, you wanna save this because you can make a delicious, delicious chicken stock out of it. Now to make it a little more neater, and also that all of the pieces are relatively the same size, I'm basically gonna cut it, I guess on the bias in half. And so again, a very sharp knife because we want the pieces to basically all be about the same size so that they cook evenly. And, you know, the presentation is very, very good. So the other important thing, okay, he doesn't say this, but she's right. Julia Child is right. And I think he's assuming that you're going to do this. You have to dry your pieces of meat or else they're not going to brown. Or what's going to happen is they start stewing in their own juices rather than browning. So make sure you dry your meat, okay? And then I have a platter and I'm just putting them aside over here. And then I'm gonna talk about the next stage, okay? I want to show you my delicious stock. So I'm gonna show you that right here is my chicken stock. Now, Julia Child's recipe, when it comes to the point to add a liquid other than the wine, she does recommend beef stock and beef bouillon or beef bouillon. Louis Diot, however, just says water. 
I had this delicious chicken stock in the refrigerator and it's actually from a roast chicken. And after the chicken was done roasting and I did roast it with some vegetables, I made a stock out of it. And you know, if you have a really good stock, if it separates, if you could see the line of fat and also that it becomes gelatin, that means you have a delicious stock and you really can't buy this in a store. What you're getting, you're, you can get a good quality stock, but if you roast a chicken, braise a chicken, add some water to the pan at the end while the chicken is resting, boil it down, put it aside, and you're gonna have a phenomenal stock. And for the fat, if you want to clarify it, all you do is break through and it comes right off and you have beautifully clear stock. This can be used to make all sorts of dishes a delicious chicken soup, a consomme, if we were to clarify it with egg whites, which I'm gonna show you how to do in another episode, this is delicious. And this is exactly what's gonna add a lot of flavor to the soup, and it's darker than most store-bought sauces. I need two cups, so I'm gonna remove the fat, and I'm gonna put it aside, and you'll see later I'm going to use it. So make your own stock if you can. It is worth it and it's going to save you money. You're getting every ounce of the chicken out of it when you're doing a meal. So you can pay for stock in the store, but this is going to be phenomenal and it is going to be a lot less expensive. The next thing you're going to need for the recipe that you can get ready in advance and it's very simple. This is from Louis Diot and I'm surprised that Julia Child doesn't do this. It's probably because she strains her sauce at the end. He recommends um, a fagot, or it's also called a bouquet garni. So your, your herbs, sometimes you, you have a lot of different things that go into the bouquet, so you read the recipe. In this case, it is just two sprigs of parsley, two celery stalks, one bay leaf, and a sprig of thyme. And all you do is you open your celery up. I put the thyme in first. I put my parsley and the bay leaf at the bottom. And then all you do with some kitchen string is you just tie it. And it's very, very simple. The reason for this is it's so you can pull it out and that you know what you've done. And so I'm gonna wrap it around a couple times just so that it stays together and it's rather neat. And so all you do is tie, and it's simple. And that is your fagot or your bouquet garni. And just make sure the bay leaf, you don't wanna eat on a bay leaf, you can choke on it. So you that's another reason he has it tied in here so that it is absolutely all together. And I think I'm gonna make another tie just to make sure it stays in. Okay, good, and that's it. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to um, render some bacon fat. And I'm gonna talk about that right now. So now the first step that's going into the same pot we're gonna use for everything is we're gonna render some bacon fat and we're gonna reserve the bacon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, he says two tablespoons of butter, put it in, if it's a little hot, turn it. I am on my simmering plate of an aga. This, you want to get your pan hot, but not scorching, but then you want to bring the heat down because you don't want to burn anything. You don't want any kind of burnt flavor in this. It will throw your dish off. The other thing, here is the bacon. What I have done in advance, Louis Diot does not say to do this. He actually just says bacon, and but he then goes on if you use um, salted pork fat, he does say to blanch it because of the salt. She is absolutely right. I have blanched this, or I should have boiled it for 10 minutes in boiling water, drained it immediately, put it in cold water, and then dried it completely with a paper towel. The reason for this is American bacon is smoked, and it can have other flavorings on it as well. And if what I did make Julia Child's recipe without blanching the bacon. And it was still very good. <laughs> but the bacon did overpower everything. 
you really tasted a lot of the smoky flavor of the bacon. It was delicious. So if you like that flavor, you don't have to do this stuff. But because I want a very classical coquavin, I am doing it. In France, in the country, you know, his grandmother would be able to get bacon right off the farm that is unsmoked, un, you know, unflavored. And that's generally what you see in a lot of French recipes because the flavor then, it's not gonna affect the other flavors in your dish. So I do recommend that step from her, okay? It isn't necessary, and if you like the flavor, a strong flavor of bacon, you don't have to do this. So we're just gonna let it render the fat and brown slowly. While that's happening, I'm gonna read you the story of Louis Diot and his aunt and his grand-mère. And now for a little history on this dish and a little story from Louis Diot. Um, this is in the cookbook and I'm gonna read it to you. It's really quite charming. And this is about essentially Coquavin and his childhood memory. And he writes, I wonder if my favorite aunt, Alexandrin, remembers, as I do, the day she let the chicken cook too fast. It was her sister's wedding day, and all the relatives have arrived at the farm, distant cousins, in-laws of all sorts, and dozens of the bride's new family. The wedding feast would last all afternoon. Aunt Alexandrin was assigned to watch the coquavin on the window stove and to remove some of the charcoal if the fire got too hot. But I was her pet and easily enticed her away to toss a ball back and forth with me. The chicken was forgotten. Suddenly we heard grandma's angry voice. Les poulets, les poulets, le dos est fort, il cuisent trop vite. The chickens, the chickens, they're cooking too fast, I smell them. Chez grand-mère. There was always special occasions for our gala eating, reunions, weddings, christenings, and feasts. Quanti quantities of food had to be prepared for these large gatherings. There was no room to broil or roast chickens for 20 or 30 people, but three large casseroles of poulet à vin à étouffé or coca vin did the job very well and without too much watching or last minute attention. But obviously they needed to watch a little bit. Such a food loving family grandmère had, had to cook for and how much good food passed through the kitchen door, vegetables, fruits, poultries, and meat, milk and cream, all produced on the farm. And what a superb cook she was. Grandmère's skill handed down through generations of good cooks was passed along to each of her daughters with painstaking concern. The love for fine cooking, one simply did not waste good food by preparing it carelessly. Years after I had become a chef, I came back to tell her of the great kitchens where I had worked and she cooked for me her poulet au vin, or chicken with wine. And what a sauce it had. Any chef, no matter how famous, would have been proud of that dish. What I'd like to show you too is the recipe itself. It literally is only basically one paragraph and a couple sentences. It's very, very simple um, and it's a great dish. I've removed the bacon, I've drained it and put it aside because it's gonna go back in later. So in the same pot or uh, pan, we're going to put in the bacon fat we're going to put, we're going to uh, brown the pieces of chicken. Now, I am taking a hint from Julia Child here. Louis Diot and so many recipes say to season your meat before you saute it or whatever you're going to do, um, especially if you're browning something, it, they always say salt and pepper. Well, she waits for that and I'm gonna try that. I've never done it this way. I'm gonna do it her way where I just brown them without having seasoned the pieces. Now it's important that you don't crowd the pan. So if you have to do it in two, you know, just do it in two, remove and, and reserve. So I'm gonna season after it has been browned. So we put the meat into the pan. And we're gonna get a nice little brown on it. 
I start with the skin side down. I don't know if that's important or not. No one says to do that or anything about it, but I'm gonna have to do this in stages. I have a little too much. So I'm gonna save my breasts or my bigger breast meat for the second browning. And so all you do is you brown it, you turn it, you don't want it to get overly dark. You don't want it, you know, a really dark, dark crust. You just want it to be golden brown. And so it, it's gonna, 10 minutes or so of turning and that's all. Now that my chicken was browned, I removed it and I reserved it. We are gonna put in, and also salt and pepper the chicken, by the way, um, because we're gonna see how that works in the end. So I'm gonna put about in four cups of whole mushrooms. He says four or 12 small mushrooms, uncut, unquartered. They just go right into the same pan, okay? And I'm just using all of these bowls um, so that it's easier to show you what to do. At home, you don't, you don't need to dirty all of this stuff. You really can take it from the cutting board and put it right in. And I'm using shallots. And he also says 12 small onions. So I really, and stir it around in the fat and we're just gonna brown it. And we're, it, it, about 10 minutes, just keep moving it, get everything coated. And the next step is simply to add flour. Now that my mushrooms and onions have been browned, I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of flour. And this essentially is making a roux that's gonna thicken the sauce. Julia Child does this later after she strains her sauce and I believe she thickens it with a bourmonier, which is butter and flour mixed together. He is doing this mainly because you, he's not gonna strain his sauce. And when you add flour to vegetables like this, you're not gonna get lumps. So it's a great thickening agent that's easy. You just put it in and let it brown a little. And the reason we let the flour brown a little is so that you don't have a pasty taste in your sauce, that it gets cooked. Now we're ready to start finishing it and getting it ready to either simmer for 30 to 40 minutes on a low flame or um, low burner, or put it in a 300 degree oven slowly and check it after 40 minutes and it should be pretty much done. I'm adding one shallot, uh, finely diced. That is in his recipe and you're gonna mix it around and get it coated and just let it saute for a little bit. And it's once everything is prepared, this dish really is quite easy. And if you don't go to the trouble of cutting up the chicken the way I did and removing um, cartilage and bones, this really is very easy. Now what Julia Child also says when you put the chicken back in, she does do the step of where you pour cognac and flame it. He does not have that on this recipe, so I'm not going to do it. Um, it it's funny, in one of her episodes, she, she talked, it's one of the old black and white episodes and she does the flaming brandy. And um, she says, I don't know if it adds any flavor or anything other than the, the dramatic effect. Well, no, it does. I think she was, you know, on TV for the first time and extemporizing. Um, it does add, it crystallizes things on the meats and the vegetables, on everything. Um, it does add flavor, but he doesn't say to do it, so I'm not going to do it. Because remember, I'm really creating the country recipe. This is not haute cuisine. So after that's browned, all you do now is you add the chicken pieces, the bouquet de garni, or the fagot, and the bacon. And so I'm going to do that right now. I have my lightly brown chicken that I'm just putting right now. I'm going to put it on top of the, the vegetables. Some juices did come out and I'm going to pour them in. So I'm just adding all of this to the pot. And the juice. And that's about it. Now, what goes in for the final stages is one crushed clove of garlic, uh, the fagot or bouquet, bouquet de garni, and the bacon. And I've drained it so it isn't too greasy so that 
He also does say to degrease the sauce at the end, but it'll depend. It probably, I probably will have to do some degreasing. And now for that wonderful gelatinized stock, which is really gonna make this taste really good. And two cups of wine. I'm using a Bordeaux and you really wanna use a wine that you would drink. It doesn't have to be highly expensive but it has to be a good wine. It cannot be something you would not drink because it will only taste worse because you're cooking this down. And so two cups of wine go in. And the liquid should just come to cover the meat. And it looks like I might need a little. And in this case, because I already measured out my stock, I am going to, I'm not gonna add extra wine. I'm gonna add some, some warm water just to get it up to where it needs to be. And I think that looks about right. You want it to get come to a simmer and then you're gonna put it on a lower heat. And so you should stir at this point and mix it around. Also in the base, as you're stirring, the flour that's accumulated at the bottom that's been brown, make sure it comes up. And that's it. So after the stir, I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna just let it cook slowly for 30 to 40 minutes on low to moderate heat. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. I already know, it's just gonna be wonderful. And make sure your bouquet gets in there because the mushrooms and everything will cook down. You're going to get a lot more juice. And that's all it is. And to serve it, I'll show you, all we do is garnish it with some chopped parsley. That's, that's what he recommends. I believe that's what she recommends. And it's a great dish. And you put it away and you're done. Well, the coca vin is ready. And so I'm gonna open it and see what happened. I will say one thing I needed to adjust from Louis Diaz's recipe that I borrowed from Julia Child was the sauce was very on the thin side. So I did use a bourmonier. Um, I used uh, two tablespoons of butter and about two and a half tablespoons of flour, mixed it together and then put it in and stirred it to thicken the sauce and I let it cook for another 20 minutes or so. But it does smell amazing. <laughs> and this was all in one pot. Um, I do see why Julia Child did the onions and the mushrooms separately for texture reasons, I think, but it's, this is still very good, and so I'm gonna show it to you. And so with my kettle right here, I'm gonna open it and see what's going on. Mm, it looks great. It smells amazing. And I am gonna check the seasoning in case it needs. At this point, you might need to add some salt and pepper and so always check your seasoning. So I'm just going to... Mm, that's very good. I don't really need to do anything to it. It's perfect. So, to serve it, very simply, I would serve this with probably a mashed potato or boiled potatoes um, and this evening I'm choosing to have asparagus. So I'm gonna plate it up. And I'm gonna take one of the pieces, which I think is a, a good size serving. And then I'm gonna put some of the mushrooms around. I do like his idea of whole mushrooms. As you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you. It, it, they really look quite lovely. and also some of the bacon. And if I could find some onions. They're in there, I know. And find a nice onion. Oh, there is one right there. So I'm trying to be very neat to give you a very nice presentation. And let me see if there's another big one. 
Aha. That's a good shot. And then we're going to pour some of the sauce over. And so I just use a small ladle. Like so. I specifically chose a ladle to not get it on the rim, and I did. So I will, I'll clean it up for you so you can see. I think the greatest invention for any chef is paper towels. And then both uh, recommend you just put some chopped parsley over the top of it. And there you go, voila, coca vin. A la Louis Viot with some really good advice from Julia Child. It really is quite splendid and I hope you enjoy it and I, I advise trying it all in one pot and it's going to make cleanup a lot easier and it is delicious. Again, this is something you can make in advance. It's great for a dinner party because you can make it in advance and reheat it and if you wait a day, the flavor will be even better. Thank you for joining me upon Walton Farm.